Hey everyone, my name is Olaf and today I will show you how to make this exact animation in Blender using soft body physics. As always, it's going to be a quick and easy tutorial, so uh, let's get started. Okay, so let's start off by switching from Blend Render to Cycles Render for better shading. And then go into the edit mode. And we're going to subdivide, so click W to subdivide. And then if you have a fast computer, increase the subdivisions to about 6. And if you have a slower one, just uh, make it 5. So go back to object mode. Now let's go into the physics. And we're going to add some soft body physics for the jelly animation. So uh, select the soft body. And then increase the friction to about... Two, and then deselect the soft body goal, and then select the soft body self collision, which is for the self collision of the object. And now for the uh, bending animation, we need to uh, let's make it 0.6 for now, and then select the stiff quads. And for now, I'm going to set the value to about 0.6, and then we can test out what it looks like later. So let's uh, move the 3D cursor and add a uh, plane. So uh, left click below the cube to move the 3D cursor and then click Shift A to add a plane. Click G set to grab the plane on the set axis and click S to scale. And this is going to be the floor, so add the collision. And if you click play, you'll see that the cube now falls down and make a wobbly jelly effect. Okay, so uh, now let's try to uh, Experiment with the values. So let's change the values to 0.4 and 0.4 for the bending as well. Let's go back to the first frame and see what it looks like. Now I think the animation looks a little bit more interesting. So uh, let's keep it at this value. The next step in the tutorial is to add some uh, additional subdivisions to the cube. So let's go into the modifiers, add modifier, and add a subdivision surface modifier. And then let's increase the subdivisions a few times, both on the render and the view. I think the render part is the most important. And uh, let's go into the edit mode, go to edge select, click A to deselect everything, and then hold in Alt and Shift. We're going to select all edges of the uh, cube because we need to change the uh, mean crease value so that uh, the edges become sharper. So just hold in Alt and Shift and select all of them. Like you see now. Okay, I think that's all. And then click N, and then change the mean crease value to around 0.7 or 0.8. By doing this, we get to keep the sharpness of the cube, but at the same time have a high poly mesh, which is important for the final animation. Okay, so the next step in the tutorial is to add the lighting and the materials. So let's select the lamp and then go into the lamp settings, make it into a sun, change the size to about 1 and then click use nodes and increase the strength so that the light becomes stronger. Click G to grab it and click R to rotate the sun. Now, if you want to see what it looks like when it's rendered, you need to click either Shift Set to go into Rendered View, or you can select it manually down here. Okay, and then you can also, if you have a GPU, change it to GPU Rendering. And if you only have a CPU, you can just keep using the CPU. It doesn't really matter. So uh, let's select the cube and add a material. And for this one, I'm going to add a glass material. And what I found out is that the ideal roughness for the glass is about 0.1 when it comes to a jelly animation. And uh, the color for the first one is going to be uh, blue. Now, let's add some color to the floor as well. So let's set it to a glass material and then change the roughness to about 0.1. And then I'm going to make it almost completely dark. And uh, let's go into the world settings and change the color of the world to be almost completely white because I want some lighting in the scene. And uh, I'm also going to scale up the floor, so click S to scale up the floor. And uh, now let's try to play the animation from the first frame. And I think it looks great. So now it's finally time to add additional cubes. And what I'm going to do is to duplicate this one and then make them crash into each other. And then at the end, 
we're going to bake the animation, which is going to take quite some time, but uh, that's okay. Now, to uh, duplicate it, you first need to right-click to select it. And uh, let's also go into the physics settings and add the collision physics so that they can collide into each other. And then you can finally duplicate. So click Shift-D to duplicate. And then just move the cube wherever you want it to be. I like to uh, set them on top of each other so that they crash into each other. Because that looks really good as you saw in the final animation, which is actually this animation. So click G to grab it. Okay, so now we have six cubes and uh, we don't need any more for now. So let's uh, just see what it looks like in render view. And later on, I'm going to add some more colors. But uh, before we uh, can render the animation, we actually need to bake the animation. So hold in shift and select all of the cubes. And if we just see what it looks like in real time, it's going to be too slow. As you can see, so we need to bake the animation. So I'll go into the soft body catch and click bake all dynamics. And that is going to bake the animation for all of these cubes. It's going to take quite some time, as you can see. I think it took me about maybe an hour. But as you saw in the final animation, it's uh, worth it. So um, after the baking is done, we can try playing the animation. So just uh, move in the timeline and uh, you will see what it looks like. And as you can see, it looks great. I love the movement of the cubes. So let's go to the next step of the tutorial, which, do, which is to add more colors. So let's start selecting the different cubes and add additional materials. Select uh, this one first. And then what you need to do to keep the material but add more colors is to make a new one by using the plus sign. And that way you will keep all of the settings, but you can uh, change the color. So let's start adding a few different colors. The first one can be uh, green, for example. Let's make a new one and make this one red. And uh, let's make this one maybe pink or purple. And let's select this one as well and try with yellow. I'm not going to spend too much time changing the colors, so I just choose for every color you want, and then we can move on to the next step of the tutorial, which is to move the camera. So click numpad zero to see through the camera, right click to select it, and I click shift F to use the fly cam. And you can move around with W, A, S, and D, and then E and Q to move up and down. So let's just make sure everything is within the frame of the camera throughout the whole animation. And let's just move the camera a little bit up so that there's more space for the cubes. Let's play through the animation. And it seems like we need to zoom out a bit with the camera. So click Shift F and then S to uh, move a little bit backwards. Okay, I think it's starting to look good. Yeah. Okay, so let's uh, go to the uh, render settings. Let's set the resolution quality to 100% and then change the sampling to about 200. If you use a, a GPU, you can also increase the performance by increasing the size of the tiles. If you just use a CPU, you can just leave it at 64. It doesn't really matter. It's just for the rendering speed. In the new update of Blender, you can also add denoising to denoise the render. So let's just make a test render to see what it looks like before we start rendering the animation itself. So uh, this is what it looks like after I sped up the uh, rendering. And I think it looks nice. So uh, I'm going to change the colors back to green, red and blue. Just to, uh, yeah, to this. And then we need to make a folder for the uh, rendered images of the animation. So make a new folder. I'm going to name it Jelly, and I'm going to call the animation just Toots, and let's just see through the animation, and uh, see if it looks okay. I think it looks okay, and I might set the end frame to about 200, because we don't really need the last frames, because there's no action in the last frames. So let's just end the animation at 
200. And then we can finally render the animation. So click animation. And after about 24 hours, this is what it looks like. I hope you liked the tutorial. If you want to learn how to make a super heavy tank in Blender and at the same time support my channel, make sure to buy the great tank course now available at udemy.com. Thanks for watching and subscribe.